Let's do this last problem. Okay, this last problem states this. Find the angles of the isosceles triangle. So we were able to find the midpoint. We found the distance to the bottom of the line. We cut that distance in half, found it to be the square root of five. Um, we know that the perpendicular line goes through the point four, negative four. We know that that y-intercept is four. <clears throat> so now we want to find that distance. And the reason why we want to find the distance between these two points is because then I will have the opposite side and the adjacent side, right? And if I have the opposite side and the adjacent side, then which function am I going to use? Tangent. Tangent. Now, is this the only, si or only function that you're able to use? No. If you wanted to find this distance, then you would have the hypotenuse and the adjacent side, right? So you could use what? Cosine. Cosine. And then if you wanted to find all the sides, you could use sine, right? But we already found the adjacent side, so I would suggest, just suggest, using one of these two, okay? Because you have the adjacent side. Um, and I'm, I'm going for this one because I like zeros. I don't know, they just seem easy to add into an, an equation. Does that make sense? And so when I'm finding the distance formula between these two points, I'm saying what is the difference, right? What is the difference? And yet I still always put y's on top, even though it's the distance formula x comes first. I put y's on top so that I'm always kind of used to having the slope there in my face. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, my x is, is 0 minus 4 is minus 4, right? And then 4 minus minus 4 would be 8. Does that make sense? Okay. So then what I have there is I have negative 4 squared plus 8 squared, right? All square rooted. That's the distance between those two points, right? Okay. So then uh, 4 squared and 8 squared. So how much is that? 80. 80. So the distance is the square root of 80, and then I want to see it broken down, right? So that we have 80, 2, 40, 2, 20, 2, 10, 2, 5, 5, 1. Pair of twos, pair of twos. So you have 2 times 2, square root 5, which is what? 4 square root 5. So we know that the distance of this triangle, the opposite side, is going to be 4 square root 5. The adjacent side is going to be the square root of 5, which is actually kind of cool. I wish I would have done this on purpose. It, uh, it almost looks like it's done on purpose. Because now, what's the tangent? The tangent inverse is opposite 4 square root 5 over the square root of 5, which, if you haven't noticed, the two square roots cancel. So it's actually the tangent inverse of 4. Okay? I didn't need a calculator yet, but because I asked you the angles, I do have to use a calculator. So this is when you use your calculator. Not to throw it on Desmos and have Desmos do all the calculations for you and all that stuff, okay? I know, I know that there's problems and there's, there's uh, things online that can do this whole problem for you, right? But uh, uh, please, just use your calculator to check your work and do the problems that you have to do. And there's no way for you to do find the tangent of 4 without yeah. you know, actually doing it in your calculator or using a, what we call a table system. There is a table system that you could do. But. All right, so tangent inverse means I have to change this to inverses. 
And I got tangent and set. So if you notice, this on the calculator, it'll say, let me try to get that. Oh, it's still not coming up. It'll say A tan, right? So I plugged in tangent inverse, but what, then it comes up as A tan. And that stands for arc tangent, okay? So they're the same thing, okay? And it equals 75.963 blah, blah, blah. So what I'm going to say is just run it off to the nearest degree, 76 degrees. Is that cool? Okay. So the theta that we need is 76 degrees. So now we got to go back to geometry. And remember, if this is an isosceles triangle, then we're going to have two thetas, right? One theta is going to be the theta number one will be 76 degrees. Theta number two will be 70, oops, will be 76 degrees, right? Because theta here and theta here, right? But then we got another angle. Phi. Okay? So the angle phi is equal to 90 minus theta. So angle phi is equal to 90 minus 76. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay? So then I take uh, 90 minus 76 and I get 14. So am I done now? Because yep. phi is equal to 14, so those are the, the, the angles to my triangle. Wait, I think it would be uh, 180. Right. Well, the, all the angles need to add up to be 180, right? In a triangle? Mm -hmm. And this doesn't add up to 180, does it? Mm -hmm. Why? Because you subtracted alpha by 90. We kind of didn't take into consideration that oh, I have two phi's also. Right? So I found this phi, which is cool. But there, to find that whole distance, I have to, have to do two phi. Does that make sense? I get it. Okay? So then I basically say two phi. Why did I say that's phi? Sorry. So um, two phi should equal 28 degrees. And now when I add them all up, 28 plus 76 plus 76 should equal 180, right? Because yeah. the sum of the angles of a triangle should be 180 degrees, correct? Yeah. And it does, right? So we found our angles, okay? So we know that the peak of the isosceles triangle is 28 degrees, and the two bases are 76 and 76. Cool. Yeah. Any questions, though? No, we don't need to. I didn't ask you to. Okay. That's a good question. Um. So, which would be the correct answer for the first topic? Is this the inverse tangent of four, or seventy-six degrees? So yeah, the inverse tangent of four, which is seventy-six degrees, but we have to find all the angles. So that's why we're finding 76 and 76 for the two base angles. They're going to be equal because they're isosceles, right? And then the, the last angle, which is 28. So, and we could have taken the two base angles minus 180, right? And just not, and called the whole top fee. Does that make sense? So, I mean, either way you go about doing it is, is totally up to you, right? And, like what was said, we could have found the hypotenuse and used it also. So we could have used that in sine, the inverse sine, or you know whatever we wanted to do. But that would have just been extra work. So, not work I asked you to do, but still works and still valid. Does that make sense? That's why I didn't cross it out. I just said, mm, not the best way. Any other questions?
Good stuff, yeah? All right.